So first of all, if you want to get the latest news about the development, go join our Discord, uh, an amazing group of people. And I've quite fastly learned that there are many of you that are way better at other things like designing, for instance, because this design looks amazing. Here we've got an entire Beechcraft yoke being born. So all in all, if you want to get the latest updates, go join in the link in the description. Okay. So our radio hasn't finished yet, but in our connector we are able to do a lot more than we used to. What has changed? Well, so at first we needed at least one board for inputs and one board for outputs when we were controlling our radio stack. Now, I did some digging, so I made it possible that you can receive the comms with one Arduino and send the COM increase, decrease with the same. Now, I've been focusing on COM1, COM2, NEV1, NEV2, but if in the future we're going to expand on this idea and um, the next step will be the autopilot, so locked altitudes, locked heading, etc. All controllable from the same Arduino, um, so you're not bound to use two. You're still totally free to use two, but it just gives you more options, right? So over here, I've opened up the connector. It has a new tab, inputs, outputs, and radio. It will all be consolidated later on into a single unified interface. Right now, it's a bit of a mess. But what we can do is hit the start button. And right now, the immediately thing that um, is noticeable is that we're able to tell that the connection with the game has been successful because we received the variables inside the display. We can even do this. Here we go. I need both swap. Here we go. And these works well. It has some issues when you use this one going to the Arduino. Why? I'm not quite sure. But let's take this from as an example. Because right now we can see that it's 118 and 125. But on a radio stack, it's 125.850. At first, we needed to change the active frequency again or swap them around. But right now, we can just see, and it will automatically correct the first one. Let's see if I'm. There we go, inner ring, outer ring. I can swap them around. See? Oh, I keep pushing them twice. Here we go. So that is working fine. Um, I got a little button here. Oh, Jesus. I can use to swap between NAV and COM. I keep pressing it twice. Here we go. And we can change the frequency. And swap these as well. Here we go. So that is working fine. It's one board. I specifically tested this and used an Uno for it because A, it's, I believe, one of the most common Arduinos out there. And B, if this can run it, anything can run it, right? There are still some minor flaws in it that I'm working out, um, but there are already some new checks in there that will make sure that a certain amount of time after you last touched any key, to make sure that you are up to date most of the time. There are still possibilities that some things go wrong um, and I'm still working on some ways to fix it, but I've been using this and testing this for the past few days and I, I didn't complain. Um, so yeah, that's the radio. We got a new icon as well, so now we're recognizable in the taskbar as well. Here we go, little LED. Um, we got these working. We can just start, select another one. Um, what I made sure is that this time, if you select nothing, it can't be started. So if you're like, why doesn't it start? It probably has something to do with you didn't select a comp. Now this graphical interface is perhaps a bit too much, but uh, we'll see how it works out and uh, what else will come in its place. Another thing that I've taken a look at, and it's uh, perhaps <laughs> quite an important part, is that if you use a throttle or if you use a uh, yoke, etc., it would send certain axes, it would send a prefix, 
and I would determine the action accordingly. Well, what I've done is make sure that if that is the case, you don't want the prefix falling off and your variables or values firing other commands, right? So let's say you open the throttle, it's going to hit the 500 mark, the 500 is going to send, turn your engine off, and your plane goes down. So there are some checks and balances in there, right? Make sure that your plane stays in the air where it belongs or on the ground. It depends where you are. So I did some tests with the whole sensors. And um, to be quite honest, it isn't up to par yet. Um, I wouldn't call this usable. But I'm working on a fix to make sure that it will be usable down the road. Right now it's quite jittery. It's a bit laggy um, and not really fun to use. And that's the most important part. So I wouldn't recommend going this route yet. Give me a few more days to see if I can get this fixed because this is a mess. Don't forget to hit the bell icon and hit the subscribe button to get the latest updates the moment they arrive so you can always be up to date.